IATV family, we know that accounting is of paramount importance to businesses regardless of the size, whether you are micro, small, medium or large entity. And that is why with us today we have Ms. Raquel Johnson, Head of Finance at Tradewind Citrus Limited. Welcome Raquel. Thank you Jeremy, thank you for having me. You're welcome. Raquel, what we want to know, what is the importance of bookkeeping and why is it so important to small businesses specifically? It is important to small business to maintain a proper, correct um, records of the transaction in their, in their business. Um, bookkeeping is a system of recording financial transactions in a business and that is important because you're legally required to do so. Especially if you're an LLC, a limited liability company, you're required to file income tax return and also an audit financial statements. And in order for you to prepare an auditor to validate your financial records of the business, there must be a system of, um, that allows you to track transactions and to, to verify the accuracy of what is being reported. And as, bookkeeping is that system. And bookkeeping, is that, bookkeeping allows you to do that. Okay, bookkeeping that. allows you to do that. What are the tools that you would need as a small business owner? for effective bookkeeping? Because we know that some business owners, you know, they say they are doing something, it is bookkeeping, but for effective bookkeeping, what are the tools that they need? The number one thing you would need is to maintain um, an independent bank account, and I'm sure that you have been advocating that. Yes, a um, business to, bank account, a very, business very bank important. Account. It's important not to co mingle what we call in accounts, co mingle cash. What does that mean? It means that you're mixing a personal um, cash with the business cash and there's no separation. And that's a strictly no no. That's a strict no no. Your bank account allows you to track movement of cash. So if you purchase uh, goods or services and you pay through your bank account, that's a record of a transaction and that must be supported by valid receipts or invoices from whatever vendor or if you're selling to a customer. Um, um, you don't have an invoice to the customer. And if you're paying utilities, if you're paying salaries, if you're paying statutories, the bank account allows you to track that information. Question Raquel, if it is that I have a bank account with statement reflecting money coming in and out of my account, do I still need to keep receipts or this, the transaction listing or the statement from the bank is sufficient? You, you will still need to keep receipts because um, the account, the bank account, bank statement will not allow you to tell you which customer this money came from or sometimes who you pay. And for, to establish trends, and one of the important things of maintaining accounts, um, our proper books of accounting is that you'll be able to establish trends and if you're going back to say do forecasting or to, to, to assess how the business has performed over the, over the years. In, and if you have a multiple product selling or services selling and you want to track how um, juice sale versus um, pastry sales doing, or in this case, is sale for registering a business versus consultants are doing. The separate accounts will allow you to do that. Bank statement will not give you those specific information which you will need to do, have in hand if you're um, establishing trends in your business or to check historical information. I think that's absolutely right, Raquel. And sometimes we have situations where customers send you some money and you it cannot look at the statement and tell who is coming from or where it's coming because from. Because they fail to send your payment advice, right? Yes, so that's I guess that's the importance of keeping the receipt in addition to the bank statement and, 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 and the also some some customers would want for you to provide them with statements, customer statement, especially if you're giving them credit terms. Because of when you sell to a customer, you can either do it cash basis, mm -hmm. like you walk into a supermarket and then you, you buy things and you give a receipt and you get your goods, or you, you offer a person's credit terms. If you are a well-established business, it's, it's, um, it's not in your interest to be moving, buying everything on a COD, but because cash and delivery basis, yes. it's good to get terms to allow you to properly manage your cash flow. So when you give terms or get terms, when you, you can give terms to your customer or you can get terms from your vendors and suppliers. And that allows you now to provide one, your customers with statements. Yes. You understand? And for you to be able to provide a customer with a statement, you have to record an invoice to the customer and also a receipt from the, a payment from the customer, which you would give a customer receipt and then apply that payment to the specific invoice and then come up with a net position for the customer. So you give a customer statement, so okay, you bought, I issued three invoices to you in a month mm -hmm. and you gave me payment and settled two invoices and mm -hmm. one invoice remains outstanding. And you can provide that information. And also that, what it also helps you with too is to see 
if they are persons who are delinquent in their tra- in, in, in yes, for your account receivables. For your account receivables. But right. also, you also want to also manage your payable side to see, okay, yes. are you taking longer than usual to pay pay your vendors? Because mm-hmm. if you are doing that, persons will be reluctant to give you credit terms in the future. Okay. So it's, mm-hmm. it's the receivable side of things they want to do. And the payable and side. And the payable so side of things they want to do. effective tools would be your business bank account. And your business bank account. Good invoicing system. Good invoicing system. To track your receivables and your payables and your payables what other tools would, would, would you recommend and what I, I want to point out Jermaine that by law you're required to keep accounting documentation for seven years for seven years seven whole years right well, so well, you well. want a system one where you can the data can maintain what we call integrity in accounting mm-hmm. you can you don't want chichi in Jamaican terms to eat it up so you want to keep your documentation in a secured area but also in a systematic manner which which bring me to a very important question Raquel our customers complain that when they get receipts, for example, from their supplier or from um, or when they issue to their customer, it fades after a while. Can those customers store the physical receipt? Can we take like a picture of it and store it somewhere? Because it's very difficult to save physical receipt for seven years. I understand that, but you can also copy it. Copy it, and what I what I do for a my photocopy, a photocopy of it, and mm-hmm. put the original. And I normally put the original on it. But if you are High tech, Mr. <laughs> Jeremy, and yes. you want to s- 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 save it in a soft copy yes. and put it on some cloud somewhere, go right ahead. But the thing is, you, you must store the information in a format that is retrievable and verifiable at some time, time down in the future. Yes, and, and, and I think I would recommend both methods because we know there are advantage and disadvantage of storing physical versus a soft copy. Yeah, but a good old filing system, the filing cabinet in good the office system. will suffice in will the same suffice. Because a lot of companies, because of the, um, are still maintaining files in filing cabinets. Mm-hmm. And once it's audited and the auditors have signed off on the financial statements, which sometimes the tax office will rely on rather than having you to go and dig up files. Because yes. if you have your accounts have been audited by uh, an audit firm that is uh, um, have a certain level of integrity, they will be rely on they will rely on those statements rather than asking to put up seven years of information. Okay, so Raquel, after seven years has passed, can I just throw away the receipts? Shred, shred, just shred, 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 right? You don't need to retain them. Okay, okay. All right, Raquel. My next question is: What are some cost-effective methods that small businesses can employ? Because you know that it's difficult running a small business. You know that everybody wants to make a profit, and accounting to business owners, and it shouldn't be, is a very boring topic, right? So, what are some cost-effective methods? Are what what accountants are boring? No, I'm not saying that. Oh. Entrepreneurs are saying Just that. Checking. But it is not, and it should not be, right, Raquel? <laughs> not at all. Um, <laughs> One of the, if you're a small startup company, I suggest that you get your receipt books and then you get your invoice book. And if you don't have, if you're not company, and how much of these costs? Like an estimate? I think it's less than five hundred dollars. Okay, very cost effective. Very cost effective. In the, in the bookstore, whatever, mm-hmm. wherever, and you can. So I can go to like a Kingston bookshop and stuff. And buy those in box, and then you have them to store. The important thing for for maintaining an invoicing system, the invoicing should be sequential. So that when you call one, two, three, four, five, six, you mm-hmm. can't be using invoice eighty and then invoice one and invoice two. Very organized. It's sh- it, it's it is sequential for a purpose, and especially mm-hmm. if you're running a business, you're you're asking other person to supervise in your absence. Yes. You want to be able to track what has been sold or what has been received in the period. So sequential um, record invoice, keeping yeah. allows you to do a validation test. Yes. As you want to make sure that you know you're not being. This how they prevent yes. like theft and, and, and audited misappropriation of funds misappropriation and all of those funds. That, yes. is, that is what this is. Yes. So you want to be able to have sequential um, sets of record. So your receipt book and invoicing system allows you to do that, right? And what it does is that it, it's they are prepared in duplicates. So you 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 reach in a copy and the customer or or, or the vendor mm-hmm. gets a copy. Mm-hmm. You understand? So you have that for your information. We, um. They, are, what, they, they have also what we call some ledger account, which is manual. Is you can buy it at the, at the, at the bookshop, um, and you can get it at the bookshop also. That it give, allows you to manually record a transaction. But what I would prefer persons do, 
is maintain Excel, ex, records in Excel, Excel, Microsoft Excel. If you don't know what Microsoft Excel is, there must be somebody who's going to high school or somewhere that you can pay them a little stipend to, to maintain. And I can say the YouTube or Google will always be yes. But there are other persons who are running business, of course, they yes. don't have, don't have a computer literate. No, I don't no, want no, to no, force no. them to do that, but they must be able to have access to resources that can help them to provide knowledge where, they, where, where they're lacking. So if there's a, your neighbor have a child who's going to high school or whomever, or somebody who's working in that field that can assist you to maintain the records in Excel. And that, so those are two things that you can basically do. If it is that you can afford, I recommend strongly, even if you have to borrow the money, invest in a small accounting pack. It makes your life so much easier. Everything is systematic and you can, with a press of a button, you can generate financial statements, you can generate a um, re report, do financial analysis and know the financial health of your business. So, fina so investing in an accounting it's, it's software is very important. Best investment you can ever What some software would you, would you recommend? So there is QuickBooks, mm -hmm. Appa, Petri, Sage, any of those systems and it costs about about two hundred thousand dollars for for the license and in installation and training for the person. Is there like a but monthly fee for, for, for this stuff? There are some options that allows you to pay a monthly subscription. Mm -hmm. But you are paying that indefinitely. I think in the long run it works out to be more expensive mm -hmm. than you buy a standalone system that rests on a desktop or on a server in the office. Of course you, you have to do your own backup and all of those things. Because what, what the subscription program does is allows you to store your data in an offsite in in the cloud or somewhere okay and that a third party is managing your data if you buy a standalone system you are the person who you are you manage. managing the data and storing the data and so that can be very risky it can be risky but it, it's doable and it's cheaper so what, what you can do is start out that way and if you want to go cloud and go big and, mm -hmm. and largely if you're not mm -hmm. down the road you, you're free to do that okay. but in the startup you want to keep your startup costs as small as yes, possible yes and we know that small business owners out there are looking for cost effective yes. methods yes. of bookkeeping Raquel all oh, this just sounds like a mouthful how often are small business owners required to do this my recommendation is to do it at least every week, every week. Don't wait until month, week. month end to be posting 50 invoices. Trust me, I've been there, I know what to do. Try just wait until the end of no, the month, don't just like wait, two days and just You know why? Because, because you know why it's important for you to do that regularly? Why is it important? Because you want to track how your business decision is, is, is performing throughout the month. You don't want to wait until month end to figure out, did I do well this month? That is, that is very <laughs> and then you're going to try and, you can't correct, you can't take corrective measures at the end of the accounting period. You want to periodically assess where you are to know, do I need to change how I'm approaching this? Do I need to do more marketing? Do I, yeah, do I, need, yeah, do I, do I need to run a promotion program if you're selling? You, you are very right, Raquel, because mm -hmm. one of the important of accounting is it aiding business decision, decision. making. Yes. So I, I totally agree with you um, regarding that. Raquel, as I said, this sounds like a lot of work, a lot, a lot of work. Um, do small businesses specifically, do we need to hire an accountant? In or an uh, in-house accountant, or you can just hire an accountant, for example, at the end of each month, at the end of each quarter, um, by annually, what is it that you would recommend? So, for a startup company, I don't think you should go the route of hiring an in-house accountant. If you have the resources, please go ahead. But most small businesses don't have the resources to hire an accountant at the start. What you can do, you have a lot of persons out there who are called freelance accountants who are qualified in the field and charge you. I know persons who are charging between forty and sixty thousand dollars to prepare financial statements. You can. There are also accounting firms that offer that service, but their fees are going to be a little bit higher than a person yes, who's doing it on the side mm -hmm. as a side hustle. Yes, you understand. So I would say find persons who are doing this with a side hustle, or it's their career, but they're doing. They have several clients that they are managing, and their fees tend to be smaller. What you are guaranteed is that the record that you're presenting is going to be correct. Right, because persons who are trained in accounts have certain rules that they follow. We call them international financial reporting standards. Yes. There are certain general rules that govern accounts. So an accountant in Jamaica is going to follow the same rules as the accountant in Germany or Italy or Australia. The same rules. It's like medicine. Okay. <laughs> the same, you understand? It's the same, thing. It's the same language wherever you are. Mm -hmm. So those persons will know how to record transaction properly. So I'm saying find somebody who offers that service. So you want to be a person want to be able to tap into that you know, affordable market to uh, have their books uh, um, in order. 
Okay, thank you, Raquel. So we have learned about the importance of bookkeeping and the importance of accounting generally. I want to say thank you, Raquel, for just taking the time out to come and speak to us, speak to small business owners. One thing I want before you wrap up, Jeremy, what is it all? What I want to point out to persons who are doing this for the first time, persons tend to look at the balance in their bank account and assume it is it's a profit. Yes. And it's a, a general mistake, right? Um, and it's not your accounting profit is different from the cash in your bank account. Raquel, just yeah. quickly go over of, um, the difference for us and to small business owners, or the difference so, between your revenue and your profit. Because as you said, some small business owners just look at the balance in their bank account and say, oh, I have 500,000 in my yes. bank account, I have it, I make it, I reach. Yes. Why is that incorrect? Yeah, so your revenue is whatever um, the cumulative amount of what you sell your goods or services for, right? Yes. You have incurred expenses to do what we call to generate that revenue, right? So your profit is when you take away all the expenses incurred, whatever it is. So if you're mm -hmm. selling, Clothes, mm -hmm. the cost for the clothes, the cost for the shop marketing, you're renting, the marketing, the rent, the salary mm -hmm. for the person who is paying that, and the salary for the owner of the business mm -hmm. too. And when you take away that, those expenses from your revenue, that's what we call net profit. Yes. But in accounts, there is also something called accrual. You may incur an expense, but don't pay for it in the same period that you incur the expense. Yes. But you still owe the money. Yes. So, the, so you have cash in your bank account, but you owe five persons. You have five hundred thousand in the bank account, and you owe five persons three hundred thousand dollars. You might think, oh, I have five hundred thousand dollars profit. No, and you, you owe. Have you actually have twenty thousand, right? Because you owe the, these persons three hundred thousand dollars. That is right. That so is it's right. very, very important for persons to understand the difference between cash in bank. For us, what your genuine profit is. And accruals on one hand, and we have another thing called prepayments as well. Yes, that means you pay for, it, for the goods or something before you actually get it, yes. right? And that's an asset in a big, what we call asset in a business, yes, and right. it appears on your balance sheet. So if I have 500,000 in my bank account and I had paid for expenses in the future for 200,000, would that mean that I have 700,000 in the bank? I have 700,000 in the bank. It depends on the contract. It, it, it depends on the contract or the arena mm -hmm. between you and the vendor who you pay that money to. Because there are some persons who based on the nature of the contract, especially if this is a project you're working on, right? Yes. That have um, percentage payment of per completion. You you technically um, owe the money based on the level of where the project is at. Okay, so it depends on the contract. It right? depends on the contract and arrangement the person you have with a person. Okay. Or, 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 or the company that you have a the, the business arrangement with. Okay, great. Right, Raquel, just want to say thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule. Raquel is not only the head of finance at Tradewind Citrus Limited, she's also the owner of Frozen Enterprise. So to all our NTV families out there, if it is that you're in Bagwalk or in the surrounding area, please to stop by Frozen Enterprise. It's a very lovely store. Raquel, again, thank you for taking the time thank out of your busy schedule. Thank you for having me. It was busy here. All right, Raquel, thanks. There you have it. So now that you understand the importance of basic bookkeeping, send us a DM on Instagram, message us on WhatsApp, or request a quote from our website for more information. So click the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you don't miss important information on how to start, grow, and legitimize your business in Jamaica.